Russia will receive unlimited supply of shells, missiles, which North Korea accumulated in 70 years. In America, they continue to comment on the security agreements between Russia and the North Korea. Let us recall that the signed agreement on strategic partnership contains the fourth chapter, which provides for mutual military assistance in the event of aggression against one of the countries by a third party. At the same time, as Kim Jong-un emphasized, Russia is already facing aggression from the entire NATO bloc. American Congressman Michael Walz, who represents Florida in the House of Representatives, commenting on the agreement, said that this is bad news both for Ukraine and the USA. North Korea has been accumulating weapons of destruction, shells, missiles, for over 70 years. Russia will receive an unlimited supply of all this, including ballistic missiles. And North Korea has its own interest in this because it will receive advanced Russian nuclear missile technologies in the space program and she can use all this against the whole world, he added. Further, Walz called the agreement between Russia and the North Korea an alliance of evil. Apparently, this is a new derivative of the hackneyed term axes of evil in the West. Continuing his reasoning, the American Republican lawmaker traditionally moved on to criticize Biden. According to him, the Biden administration has not taken any steps to prevent the alliance of evil from taking place. The Biden administration just shrugs. The only thing they can answer in this case is to sign new open checks for Ukraine. If you oppose this position, you will immediately be labeled as Putin's agents. This is the most superficial strategic thinking, Walls said. Since the clause on providing military and other assistance in the treaty signed by Kim and Putin can be interpreted as automatic military intervention, North Korea and Russia appear to have restored their alliance 28 years after their original defense agreement was abrogated. It can be evaluated as a declaration to the world that the relationship between North Korea and Russia has been elevated to a level approaching a military alliance, said Hyun Seung Soo, a senior researcher at the Korea Institute for National Unification. Security service of Ukraine destroyed over 1,000 Russian tanks since beginning of Russian aggression. Since the beginning of the full-scale invasion of Russia on February the 24th, 2022, the fighters of the security service of Ukraine have eliminated 1,006 Russian tanks. It is noted that the most significant amount of enemy armored vehicles was destroyed during the fierce battles in the Donetsk and Kharkiv regions. Using heavy armored vehicles, the aggressor often tried to break through the positions of the Ukrainian defenders and provide cover for the assault groups of the occupiers. In addition, the enemy regularly engaged tank formations to carry out attacks on the fortified areas of the defense forces in Zaporizhia, the security service of Ukraine's statement notes. In order to destroy Russian armored vehicles by fire, the security service of Ukraine conducted effective combat operations together with units of the armed forces. It is indicated that the maximum arsenal of armor-piercing weapons and unmanned systems was used against enemy tanks. A large number of Russian armored vehicles were hit at the initial stages of the offensive before they went out to storm Ukrainian positions. Some of the tanks were destroyed along with their crews, says the security service of Ukraine. Recently, Ukrainian paratroopers repelled a Russian armored attack near Novoselivsky in the Luhansk region. The 77th Separate Air Mobile Brigade said the Russian invaders were trying to break through the defense line. Tanks, IFVs, armored personnel carriers and tanks with grills were advancing, but all in vain. The paratroopers were relentless in their destruction, remarked the paratroopers. For the recent assault, the Russian command used T-90A, T-72B3 and T-72B tanks, which were equipped with protective grills. However, the Ukrainian military managed to stop the invaders and destroy these tanks. To stop the tanks, various means were used. Then the tanks were finished off with the help of attack drones. It is located on the outskirts of the Luhansk region, near the border with the Kharkiv region. The nearest large settlement nearby is Svatov, which is less than 15 kilometers away. All residents have left the village and there are no more living conditions there. All the houses in the settlements were completely destroyed. A North Korean official have kicked out Russian ministers who entered the meeting room before President Kim Jong-un, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov was the first one to the room where the meeting would be held. Lavrov was followed by First Deputy Prime Minister Denis Mancharov, 
Deputy Prime Minister Vitaly Savlyev and other officials. Later, a North Korean official entered the room and ordered the Russian officials to go out into the hall, saying that the North Korean leader would enter the room first. The video footage of the incident shows a Russian official asking the North Korean official, Why did we come here? You should have warned right away. The Russian delegation and President Vladimir Putin visited Pyongyang upon Kim Jong un's invitation on Tuesday. Putin was greatened by the North Korean leader at the airport in Pyongyang. Ahead of his official trip to North Korea, Putin praised Kim Jong un for firmly supporting Russia in its war of invasion in Ukraine. Putin last visited North Korea in 2000, at the start of his presidential career. Зачем уже зашли сюда? Нет, у нас тут Сейчас подойдут наши руководители. Ну вы сразу приходите, сначала говорите, бежать.